Oop. And you, you got him. For many of us, bluegill started a lifelong obsession with fishing. Still today, these spunky fish have a way of warming the heart and putting smiles on anglers of all ages, young and old. Yes, bluegill fishing is one of life's simpler pleasures. Found in most of the waters across the U.S., bluegill bites are readily accessible. And for those lakes, reservoirs, and rivers, there are some real gems. Panfish factories that kick out giants pushing the 10, 11, and even 12 inch mark. Trophies in every sense of the word. But finding these big gills can be a challenge as many panfish waters have been over harvested, stunting entire populations. Fact is, bluegill fisheries are very fragile, often requiring special regulations like those on select Minnesota waters. These lakes with five fish possession limits have seen bluegill size classes increase steadily over time, ensuring quality big bluegill fishing for future generations. What can we do to help preserve these precious panfish? The best way to start is by releasing big male bluegills, which determine the entire population size structure and can be identified by color. It's relatively simple when you know what to look for. A good rule of thumb though, is to keep only mid-sized panfish for the frying pan, releasing nine inch plus fish regardless of sex. The difference between these mid-sized fish and trophy gills is seldom more than a forkful. On today's edge, we explore a fantastic big bluegill fishery managed through effective selective harvest and merge old school and new school techniques to tap broad shoulder giants. Along the way, we demonstrate how today's top fish finding technologies like side imaging and 360 can help anglers beeline to the best bluegill habitat on the lake and also reveal what fly rod panfish anglers have known for a century, that top water poppers can be one of the most effective tools available for finding and catching aggressive bull gills. Super quality fish here. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Oh yeah, this is totally it. Remember that stick sticking out of the water? We're here. Yep, I'm gonna tail him down. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. God. Oh, he came how he wanted it. He wants it, so here he comes. Oh, oh I just missed one too. Yeah, he came back out of the water. You can see him coming up for it. Yeah. He just makes him mad. Got him, got him, Dan. <laughs> how do you like that? You know, top water, is one of the most effective tools there is for finding aggressive fish. And when you think of topwater fishing, what are you thinking of a lot of the time? Of course, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, muskies. But how often do you think about this type of a deal? <laughs> Giant sunfish on topwater. And that's what we're doing today. We're catching big sunfish on top. Now, this technique is certainly not unfamiliar to fly guys. They throw little poppers all the time, yet guys who like fishing with gear rarely do this. Now, if you pan fish, there's no doubt you've had plenty of experiences when sunnies and crappies come up and hit the float. So we're not fishing with floats, we're fishing with floats that actually catch fish. Rapala is ultralight popper. Cool, I'm gonna let this guy go, Dan. There we go. Oh, another big giant one. Yep. Oh, this is a big one. This guy has shoulders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
There's no place like this. Whoa! Oh, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird. This is my spot. Right here. My thinking spot. My fishing spot. My spot. Not yours. This is where I go. For release. And for catch and release. Where no one can find me. And fish can't hide from me. This is my spot. And I ain't going nowhere. Lund builds the best fishing boats. But did you know how affordable the best can be? Take the 1625 Fury XL side console, for example. Starting prices have been slashed. A savings of nearly $3,000. Or the 1625 Fury XL Sport walkthrough windshield. A savings of over $3,000. Always wanted to get into a new Lund? Visit Lundboats.com for your free catalog and to find a dealer near you. And take advantage of these great savings. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. Where they get sideways on you, man, and they just... Oh, they're incredible. They get sideways on you and... Wow-wee. There's like a cast of casts you got to make out there. Yep. You throw it out there and you see them come or you, you don't. It's like you know within the first couple cranks of your cast if you're going to get them. That is a good one. Wow, Dan. There we go. Look at that. Those are magnum bluegills. You know, fish like this are not everywhere. Let's take a look at some of the science behind finding big bluegills. The lakes that we, we tend to see good bluegill growth are ones uh, where the, the habitat is actually decent. You know, we have, we have good quality um, emergent vegetation. We have uh, good epiphytic macroinvertebrates, or basically bugs on plants, right? And then, um, you know, they have good quality vegetation that's actually submerged, that provides a protection for the young of the year. It, um, it allows for the good quality growth because there's plenty of food available. And um, generally, the harvest has a tendency to be a little bit lower on some of those lakes. Um, or there might be some special regulations in place. We found that, that having reduced bag limits on some of our lakes actually can be beneficial to producing or maintaining a larger um, overall size structure of, of bluegill in most populations. So. so if I was gonna tell an angler where the best places to go to find big bluegill are, um, in the state of Minnesota, we're kind of, we're, we're blessed with a lot of different opportunity for unique scenarios. Um, if you think about places in central Minnesota, north central Minnesota, where the, the habitat quality is great, the water quality is great, the, um, the forage amount that's available there for big bluegill is all there in quality. That's great. Um, if the harvest is actually relatively low, if you know the pressure's not that high, those things can equate to a, a population that has, is, is growing fairly well. Um, the growth is obviously pretty important. And with that said, there's some unique opportunities that present themselves in lakes that are shallow and maybe have a connection to another lake. And um, actually a winter kill sometimes is induced when we have severe winters. And those lakes, they tend to be very, or more nutrient rich, more productive and um, the bluegills get in there right after the winter kill scenario, typically, and they'll grow like gangbusters. And we've seen this in several of our uh, lakes, shallower lakes, kind of in, in south central Minnesota, even on, into southwestern Minnesota, where they might have a winter kill, bluegills are either reintroduced or they get in there naturally, and all of a sudden they're, they're growing, you know, up to two times, maybe even three times faster than the going average. And that's something to think about is that the average bluegill in central Minnesota grows about one inch per year. So 
if we get growth rates that are twice or three times that, that's pretty phenomenal. And you can have you know bluegills that are attaining eight to nine inches in less than six years, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Larger reservoirs and uh, larger lakes tend to be able to support uh, more because the harvest isn't so keyed in. In other words, the, the pressure, even if it is higher pressure, it's hard to find some of those larger fish all the time. So they tend to protect some of the larger um, males in the population. How important are the bluegills, the larger fish? They're very important. And actually part of the, the efforts that we're trying to make with uh, using our reduced bag limit on six lakes that we did is also doing some education to anglers, understanding the difference between male and female bluegill. But the males tend to be more brightly colored. They have a bull, more of a bull style nose or rounded style nose as opposed to, opposed to pointed. Uh, they tend to have more of the orange and or more colorful belly and um, less likely to be like that yellow belly and vertical barring. They won't have that as prevalent. Um, the males are the, the key protectors and as I mentioned earlier with the, the nesting protection um, deal is that the, the larger males occupy some of the best habitat in the nesting colony. So their parental care is generally higher and better and those are the ones that we really need to put back. And basically, without the larger parental males in the population, the population size at maturity declines over time. So one of the things that we were trying to educate folks on is that, you know, it's okay to take some fish home, but keep some of the moderate sized fish and return those biggest males to the population. And even to the point that you could actually keep some smaller females or those medium sized females or even larger females, and it wouldn't be a detriment to the population because the males are the ones that dictate the overall maximum size of that individual population. Got it, nice. Dan. That was pretty cool. Really cool. We had come through, I mean, we're just fishing waypoints right now. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. And that's the, oh yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just <laughs> tough customers, huh? I know. I'm gonna tail on us down here. All right. That is like the most amazing tool, isn't it? Nice, nice bluegill. Look at that on top. Oh man, look at that, the X-Pop. Now we're not just, though that, that X-Pop is a great search tool for finding bluegills, we're not actually out here searching with that bait. We know where the fish are 
And that all comes down to using our electronics the best we can. Side imaging is one of the most amazing tools for finding the right stuff that bluegills are living in. And right now, we're right at the front end of the spawn. In a few places in the lake, we're starting to see nesting colonies show up. These fish are still a little pre-spawn. At any time you've got pre-spawn fish, you're talking about the hottest bite you're gonna run into. Largemouth, smallmouth, walleyes, you name it, if it's pre-spawn, the bite is red hot. And so right now, we found these colonies, and we're just going back to see what kind of size is on them with top waters. You know why? Because when we were throwing corks earlier in a couple spots, the fish seem more interested in our bobbers than they did in our baits. What is a colony, you might ask? Well, bluegills are social spawners, and when they start building nests, they do it in groups. And these groups of nests are called colonies. They are very easy to find with the right electronics. We use hummingbird side imaging to cruise the shorelines of new lakes, looking for nesting colonies. And these things stick out like a sore thumb. To me, they kind of look like uh, dimples on a golf ball. Then we circle around and use the 360 imaging to dial us in. This gets us right on the spot on the spot. This is our buddy KC, and he's gonna share some stuff that will help you set up your side imaging so you get the best view possible. Usually when I first get to the lake, I like to set the units up at about 100 feet on each side of the boat. I don't need a real crisp high def image of a rock pile or a weed clump. As long as I get a little tip that it's there, I can spin the boat around, set, the, set it down to like 50 feet, make another pass, and then get a really detailed image of the spot. Okay, for my chart speed, I like to set my chart speed to match the miles per hour I'm going down the shoreline. So if I'm going four miles an hour, I just quick set the speed to four, and it matches really good and gives you a good picture. 360 I only use after I find the spots. Um, for instance, today I'll just start scanning and if it takes me 45 minutes to find what I'm looking for, I'll, I'll put the time in scanning. Once I have that area, I'll put a waypoint on it, spin the boat around, drop the trolling motor with the 360 in the water and I can pull right up to the spot and be on it. If it's under 12 feet, then I can put the talons down and hold the boat on that spot. Okay, so after we mark the waypoint, we turn on with the 360 and we can pull right up to the spot. You can see the waypoint I dropped on there. That was just to get close to the area we wanted to fish. But you can see all the divots here and you can actually see white lines moving around as the 360 makes its circle. And those are the big panfish you s that we're catching. They're actually swimming around from nest to nest. So it's real easy to see if these colonies are active or not just by seeing the white lines moving around. If you pull up to one of these and it's just the nest and there's nothing else around, chances are there's not fish using it. They could have already been done and then moved out to deeper water. Oh, jeez, big really? tank. Oh, yep, yeah, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Got him. Nice. Got him. That was so fun. He just kept looking, 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 looking. Yeah. And again, it's just reading the mood of the fish. I just kept letting it sit there. Yep. And eventually, he said, ah, oh, you know what? I'll take it. I'm not afraid to take that. Look at these things. Man, are these just, oh. <laughs> and it's so fun on this equipment. I mean, these rods are just perfectly designed. Now, I'm fishing a panfish rod, but the gills that we're into today there he goes. Doubled oh. up. Double trouble. The rods that we're using today are, you know, are great, the panfish stuff, but also using like a, oh man, I mean, look at that, that dude. You know, a medium light walleye rod is another good option for this, this type of fishing, but the panfish stuff makes it, makes it really, 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 really nice. And super quality fish here. Let me share with you a little bit about the line that we're using right now. I'm gonna get this guy back here quick. See you, dude. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the line that we're, we're using on this stuff. This is Suffix Nano Braid. And I know a lot of guys like topwater fishing with, with mono and mono works, works great. But uh, for an all around panfish line, I've never seen a product more superior. You can throw ultra tiny baits a mile with this stuff 
but uh, it is so thin. This is six pound test right now, and it's got like one pound diameter. We're just running a short shank of monofilament, like six pound mono on here, and the big advantage to running a little mono, rather than tying direct, now the fish will bite it if you tie direct, but with that light line, it tends to get wrapped up in the split rings, and so just having a little bit heavier mono as your lead really makes a difference in keeping the bait performing optimally. But you get yourself a seven foot medium light walleye rod. I'm fishing the St. Croix seven foot light panfish rod with a size, you know, this is just a perfect size 2000. I'm fishing the Revros right now from Daiwa. This is just a dynamite reel. It's a dynamite combo. You get set up with this, try this sometime when you've got a nice early summer day, even into summer, you're gonna have a blast. Spring, it's here. And for us, that means heading outdoors. That's where you'll find us. We work, we cut, we plant, we renew and renovate outdoors. And of course, we fish. At the end of the day, we relax outdoors. We were born in the Midwest. We are outdoors, always. Mills Fleet Farm. get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be until I added smooth moves to my boat. It's four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. The way these gills respond to a popper is really no different than a small mouth or a large mouth. You gotta read the attitude of the fish. So you might see the gills come up and then they, they roll on it. They, see it, they see it moving and it's like they like it when they're moving or you see them start to rise when the bait is sitting really still. So read the mood of the fish. If you're letting the bait sit for a few minutes and all of a sudden you start to see the gills rise, just keep letting it sit there. And conversely, if you're letting it sit and you don't see anything, start chugging it along. And a lot of times that faster action, the commotion on top will get them going. It's amazing how aggressive these fish can be. They're not just, it's not just like ice fishing where you gotta have a little tiny jig in front of their nose. These fish are traveling, in some cases, like eight feet off the bottom to come up and smash these baits. They're really aggressive. But again, just read the mood of the fish just like you would for bass. Those bluegills do like to feed up a lot. And the presentation, technically, what we're doing today is no different than if you were popper fishing for smallmouth. You, oh, you know, got one, you oh, got one. Ah, it's, <laughs> sometimes you don't even have to pop it. You just throw it out there and you get them. That was cool. I saw him come up and just crunch it. Oh, come on out. He's hiding underneath the boat. There he is. Wow. Sweet, dude. <laughs> like I was saying, the wow, pre is presentation is no different than what you do for smallmouth. You know, you pop, pop, let it sit. Just uh, let the bait do the work. Got him. Big you know boy I mean? there, Dan. Big one. It wow. has a lot of attraction and triggering qualities. <laughs> Yikes. Look at the size of those gills, man. That is so much fun. You got to try it. Let those big guys go. 
You know, people pray for lots of different needs in their life. Probably two things that are at the uh, uh, top of the list are financial needs and uh, 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 health and wellness needs. Uh, we're, we're all dealing with health issues at some time in our life. A friend of mine uh, sent me this book, The Faith Link, and uh, uh, it was a great read, and I just want to share a few things with you uh, uh, from it. The, on the lead page it says, scientific proof that your belief determines your health. Question on the back, is religion good for your health? The global fitness and health industry generates more than 75 billion in revenue annually. You may be spending your income on diet fads, expensive medications, and fitness equipment without considering the direct connection between your health and your faith. <laughs> that caught my attention. I couldn't put the book down once I picked it up. Just let me take them in here and read some, some of these uh, uh, statements to you. I can't overstate the value of the spiritual life when considering the plethora of studies in human psychology and the pathophysiology that illustrate how human beings are not designed to withstand too much adversity. Some are clear. For example, humans cannot survive the absence of oxygen, which is indispensable to, to life for long. Nor can they withstand lack of sleep, an utter loss of sunlight, prolonged physical inactivity, or a massive absorption of calories will manifest themselves and cause serious diseases. Thanks to clinical and epidemiological studies, we know that certain mental states and beliefs can also damage our health. Thankfully, recent years have seen a conjoining of scientific conclusions and spiritual precepts developed in the Bible, particularly the New Testament. In this way, the numerous teachings of Jesus and the apostles are not simply rigid moral dictates. They also represent inspired instructions that will help protect our lives. The health benefits available by following the scripture's teachings invite us to review with a new eye. By implementing them, we can enjoy better health, both mentally and physically. There's something in God's word that addresses every issue of life. He cares about our health today. He wants you to be healthy, well, strong, to live a, a, a good life. And there's a lot of scripture that talks about it. This book was filled with documented facts, scientific fact that locks in with scripture that talks about health and healing based on your faith. I love it, it was a great read to me. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe, healthy fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.